Hello friends, welcome back to another Year in the Bible video. This time I'm going to be, I was going to say killing two birds with one stone, but that's kind of an odd way to talk about reading the Bible, but I'm going to be doing Mark and Luke. I was thinking about saving Luke to put it with Acts because Luke and Acts kind of flow into one another, were written as one piece, but I um, wanted to keep us in, in line here for those of you who are going straight through. So um, uh, the Gospel of Mark followed by the Gospel of Luke. Again, my, my read through the Bible plan is going pretty well. I, I will confess that there has been some busyness in my schedule as of late, a couple of days where I've had to get up super early and get up. I live about uh, 25, 30 miles south of Nashville in the suburbs, and so sometimes it takes me a long time to get there, and I've had to get up really early, so I haven't really gotten into my morning routine really well recently, but I have been playing catch-up. So, And with the Gospels, I like that because I can just sit down instead of for 10 or 15 minutes, I can sit down um, for 30 or 40 minutes and read longer sections. So um, I prefer small chunks every single day, but it's been going pretty well to, 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 to play a little bit of catch up, and I'm still ahead of schedule by three or four weeks right now. So I should be finishing up probably around Thanksgiving break um, with the Bible. And then my plan is, I don't know if I've officially announced this, but my plan is I'm going to read through the Apocrypha for the first time. Um, as a Protestant, I've, I've never really spent much time in the Apocrypha. I just taught it for, I'm teaching a class at Belmont called Understanding the Bible, and I just taught some of the Apocrypha, um, kind of the history of it to my class. I'm really interested in it, and so I'm going to spend some time with that and kind of document that for you um, as well, make some videos about the Apocrypha from a, from a Protestant's first-time perspective. That's my plan. Anyway, so Gospel of Mark, the shortest of the Gospels, probably the first of the Gospels that was written. It's always been one of my favorites. Jesus seems a little bit, um, I don't know what the word is. He seems a little bit like feisty, right? He seems like he's telling people, hey, don't, don't, don't tell anybody about this. He seems a little bit like bristly almost sometimes in Mark. And, and I like that. It's just kind of a different side of Jesus. And as you, it's, it's short. It's to the point. It dives right in. We don't get any of these stories. I mean, right here, John the Baptist in chapter 1, Jesus starting his ministry. Um, Mark's not wasting any time. It ends really abruptly. Um, and, and so I really, I like it. I've, I've always liked it. It's an interesting, um, an interesting book. Right here, I highlighted chapter 1, just, you know, the first words of Jesus in his story. The time is fulfilled. Kairos, that's the Greek word, kairos. Um, the, the, the moment has arrived. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent. Believe the good news. So um, right there at the very beginning, and really it's kind of a, a three-part picture in Mark, right? You get like all this stuff happening in Galilee, and then Jesus kind of takes this journey and ends up in Jerusalem, very similar to Luke, that kind of journey motif. There's a lot of, um, I noticed this time, there's a lot of Jesus in the boat crossing bodies of water. That seems to be a theme in, in the book of Mark. Um, and, and really, I think one of the things that stood out to me on this read-through is just this big-time question of, who is this guy? Who is Jesus? And that's the question that a lot of people are wrestling with, with early on in the Gospel of Mark. I think my favorite moment in the entire book is at the very end of, of chapter 4. There's the Jesus calming the storm. His disciples wake him up. They're like, don't you even care about us? And he's like, what's going on? And then he, he calms the storm. And then it says, they were filled with great awe and said to one another, this is Mark chapter 4, verse 41, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And that's how the story ends. That's how this little pericope in Mark 4 ends. Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? Who is this? It's almost as if Mark is asking the reader that question. Who do you think this is? They're asking it, the disciples are asking it, but we're, we're being begged throughout Mark to kind of make our own mind up about who this is. And then about halfway through, we kind of start having these conversations about this, this word Messiah and what does it mean for Jesus to be the Messiah? He's not this warrior king that many of the people of Israel have been waiting for, but um, we see these allusions to Isaiah and the suffering servant, and, and really that's who Jesus is. That's what it means for him to be the Messiah. And, and so when we're asking these questions and then we're starting to kind of flesh out um, these answers about who he is. Um, again, repeatedly I'm underlining, he's telling nobody to tell them. This kind of messianic secret is a theme you hear often mentioned in Mark. Um, but then also this idea of the kingdom of God and what it really means um, for people, for Jesus to, to be that king in a way that they weren't necessarily expecting. Um, and then these multiple endings in Mark, you might see little notes in your Bible 
that it, what basically these endings it ends with the, the the women running for their lives and that's where the 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 oldest manuscripts of mark end and then we get these extra endings that kind of tie a bow on it those actually aren't from the oldest most uh most appreciated manuscripts of mark so if you read it up through what is that verse 8 in chapter 16 it's kind of like man it ends pretty pretty intense right there's these lingering questions it's not necessarily this like really cookie cutter picture there's some 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 tense moments in mark again just kind of showing that this gospel is different than the other four and it's 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 a little shorter it's a little bit more to the point it's a little bit sharper on the edges does that make sense um but i think that that big looming question for me is who is jesus is he the messiah do we believe that and and are we going to embrace all that it means um in this book so love mark um so much so much there so much there um I'm, I'm partly thinking to myself man i would love to like maybe even on this channel do some videos where i like dive in deeper and do like more bible study stuff would you be interested in that i mean not a lot of people are watching these videos of the year i mean some of you are with me but it's not as popular as the bible reviews i recognize that but um luke always luke has always been one of my favorites i think luke Whereas we talked about in, in the Gospel of Matthew, there's so much connections to the people of Israel and the Hebrew faith. Um, Luke is, is seem to, seeming to be opening this thing up to everybody. It's about salvation for all people. I noted that in chapter 3, when he gets to the genealogy of Jesus, whereas in Matthew it starts with Abraham, in Luke he goes all the way back to Adam. Almost as if to say, like Matthew's going, hey, this is the... the, the the heir to this Abrahamic covenant, to the kingdom of David, that sort of stuff, this Jewish lineage, the people of God, Israel. And 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 Luke, that's sorry, that's Matthew. And then in Luke, it's like, no, we're going all, all the way back to Adam. All mankind. That's who this guy is is coming from. And that's what this is for, right? So it's really um talking about salvation in that sense for all people. Jesus stands up in chapter four and talks about his ministry for the poor and um, the brokenhearted, the widow, the, the sick, and that's what happens. He starts to heal all of these people, and suddenly we talk about the kingdom of God, this sermon on the plain, and it's like this upside-down look at what we thought it was going to be. And he's opening it up to everybody, not just God's people Israel, but all people are being invited into this story, are being invited into this, this, this new kingdom, this salvation that comes from Jesus. So I, I really loved that. I think that it's... Um, where Mark kind of just presses through. Luke is digging into the details a little bit more. He's he's really playing around with, with all, all of the different moments and kind of just getting the goodness of them, but coming from a slightly different perspective, even than Matthew. Um, I loved his response when they basically say, are you the one? This is chapter seven. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are clean, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have been brought to them. Like, you tell me if you think I'm the one. This is the evidence of what's happening in my ministry and through my life. Um, that big section in the middle where he's telling all these parables, they're making their way to Jerusalem. Um, and then, of course, my favorite of those, and I think a lot of people would probably say this, is, is the parable of the prodigal son, right? So you've got these two sons. One leaves. He rejects his father. He goes on the run. He, he wastes everything. Yeah, when he comes home, the father throws a party in his honor. And there's this son who stayed back who's like, hey, what about me? I did, I did what I was supposed to do. And it's like, Again, Luke's saying, we're turning this thing upside down. He's looking at the Pharisees. He's looking at the religious leaders and saying, this is for everybody. Even the ones who don't play by the rules all the time, we're extending this. Jesus is doing something different here than we even um, expected him to do, which I think is, is really, really beautiful. So the story ends the same in all three of our Gospels so far, and I think it's going to end the same in, in John as well because um, Jesus goes to the cross. Um, he's crucified for us. Um, but he doesn't stay dead. Amen. Praise God. He, he lives. He, he defeats sin and death when he is uh, raised from the grave. Raised, the tomb is empty uh, so that our lives don't have to be. I said that in a sermon recently. I really love that line. The tomb is empty so our lives don't have to be. And then at the very end, he says, you need to wait here in Jerusalem for the Spirit. And then it's like John is sandwiched in between Luke and Acts, but literally you could turn the page and start right into Luke. It's where, or start right into Acts. It's where this story picks up and we get to hear the rest of the story. So I love seeing Luke Acts as what it was, which was a, a two-piece work from one author, kind of getting the story of Jesus and then the story of this movement of the early church. So, um, but yeah, Mark and Luke, good side by side. I'm glad we're doing this actually as one video 
two different perspectives on who Jesus was, two different writers, right? Yes, the, the inspired word of God, but they're, they're pointing different things out about him, and all four Gospels do that. They're, they're, they're as if um, we're, we're standing on four different peaks over a valley looking down at the same thing. They're all looking in at the life of Jesus, but they're, they're um, interpreting that, and they're, they're telling that story in a way that kind of points out different things about who he was and what his life and his death and his resurrection meant. And I love that. I love that about the Gospels. And John is going to take a totally different... John's like real philosophical. It's going to be about Jesus as, as God, you know? Like, um, in the beginning was the Word, right? So I can see that right here on the first page of John. So I'm, I'm excited to dive in that and, and come back later and share some perspectives on John as one of the, you know, it's of, of the four, it's the one that's kind of off on its own. So I'm excited to spend some time now in John and, and then come back to you. So anyway... I'm loving this process. I love reading the Bible. I've mentioned my class at Belmont. I'm teaching through the Bible, and as I'm recording this, I'm reading the Gospels, and I'm teaching through the Gospels um, in my class, and I'm having lots of interesting conversations with college students about um, what the Bible, what the New Testament means, what the life of Jesus means. So I definitely would appreciate your prayers um, for me as I, as I have those conversations. And uh, again, if you have any questions, always drop those in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to hear where you're at on your journey through the Bible this year. Thank you so much to all of you who are encouraging me and watching these videos and, and pressing in with me. This is a good thing. So um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So leave me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, I will see you next time.